Did you know it was International Beer Day just like two days ago? That is right, and do I have a great recommendation for you. So if you're looking for a great American pale ale and one that will surely make you look like a connoisseur, then join me on this tasting. My name is Eddie, and I have tasted and sampled many beers from all over the world, and it is my passion to help you find that perfect beer you're looking for. Whether you're looking to try something new or there is something very specific that you're looking for to pair with your food, I got your back. Welcome back, beer lovers. Thank you for spending the next few minutes with me. As I said in the intro, my name is Eddie, and on this channel, I taste and review all kinds of beers and give you my most honest opinion about them, as well as some ideas to pair them with your food, just like the one you're about to watch. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon down there so you're notified every time I release a new beer review video. And if you like the video, I like the thumbs up. So. Today, I have a local one, actually, from our friends at Tampa Bay Brewing Company, their American Pale Ale called Reef Donkey. That is right, and you can see a little fish there because a Reef Donkey is our colloquial name for our game fish that we have here in the Florida coast, which is the Amberjack. That's what we call a reef donkey. So in honor of the Amberjack, Tampa Bay Brewing Company. And check it out, my trusty tulip glass, which is the glass I recommend you use when you're pouring yourself a nice American pale ale. And having the right glass for the beer that you're tasting, it's always, always a great way to show your beer connoisseur chops, right? So if you're interested, check out the description below how you can uh, get your own set of Beer Connoisseur TV glasses. Now, where do we always start? Appearance, right? And more importantly, the three C's of appearance, which are color, clarity, and carbonation. That is right, my friend. So color, it is a very bright, kind of like yellow. Yes, almost like copper, but it's very, very bright yellow. Very clear. There's no... I don't see any cloudiness in this one. And even though you can see, actually, I'll take that back. There is some, some suspension there. There is very, very faint suspension there. And so a little bit of cloudy, cloudiness to it. And actually almost no, no action of uh, bubbles here, even though you can see that big head of foam that was uh, created there when I poured but it's also dissipating rather quickly, almost three fingers, but now it's almost lost um, one full finger already. So nice head of foam, not huge retention, and not lots of carbonation. How about the aromas now? Well, to be honest with you, it smells almost like a, uh, like a hazy IPA. It does have some of like a lemony, citrusy aroma to it with just like a base of that piney resin dankiness from like the the IPA or I should say the pale ale it smells a lot like a like a New England like a New England IPA to be honest with you and Full disclosure, I have had Reef Donkey before, but it's been a long time, so it's almost like it's new to me. I'll taste it now and let you know what I'm experiencing there. Actually, lighter than I thought or that I remember, it has, it starts very light on the tip of the tongue. I could not pick up any particular flavors, um, slight hint of bitterness, but not, not anything, you know, not an overpowering bitterness. Then the middle of the taste 
was like grapefruity. So a little bit of grapefruit, a lot lighter body, kind of like a lighter IPA, to be honest with you. Um, and, you know, like basically that's, you know, a pale ale a little bit, but I didn't find it as robust as I expected or as I remember it. Um, and then the end of the taste actually got a lot more grapefruity. So I definitely have that kind of like, um, you know, that tartiness kind of like um, from, the, from the grapefruit for sure. Um, but yeah, and then the flavor kind of lingers back there after. Yeah, and it does have a little bit of hoppiness, but not as much as you would find in, a, in, a, in, a, in an IPA. So definitely kind of like a toned down version of a, of a New England IPA, I would say. But it is definitely, you know, a, a, a pale ale in its own right. Now, that all becomes important when we go to the next piece, which is the part that actually, I believe, enhances us as beer connoisseur, which is the food pairings, right? Um, pale ales, we like to pair with kind of like fatty foods because, you know, they have kind of like the, the, the characteristics and some of them are higher alcohol content. This one is only 5.5, so um, not, not a big alcohol content here, so that, you know, you cannot count on that. However, it does have some of the other characteristics. So the first things I think it would go great with this, it's just a an American burger with caramelized onions on top. If you want to add some bacon to that one, oh yes, that will go great with the beer. And then, kind of like, I like chicken thighs, you know, grilled chicken thighs, but I'm going to say some barbecue grilled chicken thighs. Yes, because it's going to be on the lighter, but still flavor food, um, food that I think will go great here. And if you want to... Uh, Pair this with some appetizers, try it with some guacamole and chips. Yes, because that fattiness in the guacamole, I think the beer still has some good characteristics there to help you enjoy that guac uh, taste after taste. Now, as far as cheese, I am going to try something here, just because I want to try it. I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but this is Charlesburg cheese, which is, you know, a mix between Gouda and kind of like a Swiss cheese. And I'm gonna taste it and I'll let you know how that goes. If not, I have a, another suggestion for you. I got this passion, and it's burning deep inside of me. And this time, no, no. You know, if you, if you like Jarlsberg cheese, I believe it is a decent pairing because the Jarlsberg is not like a very creamy cheese or anything like that. And the beer does not have the astringency, like I said, doesn't have a lot of carbonation to help you, you know, if sometimes we have some of those really creamy cheeses. So I think that's a good, that's a good decent pairing there if you want to try it with some Jarlsberg. And, you know, the Jarlsberg does not have such a big overpowering pungent taste. So again, that beer would go great, you know, goes great with that. Um, you know, you can always trust me to leave you a great recommendation as far as the dessert pairing. So go ahead and open the description below. So that's my gift to you. So that concludes today's lesson, but not before I ask you, have you had Reef Donkey before? What do you think of it? Leave me some comments below. I'd love to hear what you think on what you have experienced with it. I hope I have helped you increase your beer knowledge as we all continue on this journey of becoming beer connoisseurs. And I encourage you to be on the lookout over the next few days when I release my next beer review video. And until then, enjoy.